Hey Lee Tribe, so in this video, I am going to teach you guys how to create designs with the popular plaid pattern that you see for Christmas. This is the Buffalo check, Buffalo plaid, lumberjack pattern, whatever you wanna call it. But as you can see by these BSRs, designs sell really well every single year. And it's really about being creative and finding different ways to use this pattern instead of copying off of what everybody else is doing. I notice a lot of people do the animals, that's been very popular, but try to think outside the box. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you three different ways with three different software programs that you can use this pattern with Canva, grab it, which are both free, and then Photoshop, which in my opinion, it's the easiest, but it's not free. Let's start off with Canva. Now, I'm providing you all a free pattern that I created in Illustrator. You can download the pattern by going to the link in the description because you're gonna need it for this tutorial. So let's start with Canva. And the first thing you're gonna do is go over to the elements section and then you're gonna type in frame. And it's gonna bring up all these frames that sort of act like clipping masks. So basically what you do is you put the pattern over these frames and the pattern takes the shape of the frame. So for example, if you wanted to spell something, you have to do this letter by letter, unfortunately, but it still works. So you would select the letter D and then we're gonna go up to uploads Make sure you click upload media first and import the image that you downloaded from my site. It should be a PNG file. So you're gonna click that swatch and you're going to hover, and I'm clicking and dragging over the letter D and it just falls in place like that. So you would do that for the remaining text and also for any other elements that you see in this frame section. And I should clarify that elements that are free on Canva are free for commercial use. Not the stock photos, but the free elements can be used commercially. I always have to emphasize that because I think people do get confused about that. All right, now let's do Gravit Designer, which is sort of like an alternative to Illustrator. It's free, but it also has premium options, but you can do a ton of stuff with their free version. All right, so we're gonna draw a Santa hat using the plaid pattern that I created. So we're gonna start up here and grab the rectangle tool and we're gonna draw a rectangle about like that. Now to round the corners, you come over here to the appearance panel and drag the corner slider until you have the corners like you want them. This is a little thin for me. Let's move that down. So now we're gonna draw the top part of the hat and that's where the plaid's gonna come in. So I'm gonna click the P on my keyboard to grab the pen tool and I'm going to click Click about there, click and hold and drag inward to try to get that little arc. Now I'm gonna hold down the option key and click at that point I just dropped to turn off my curve. That would be Alt if you're on Windows. And then I'm gonna close this by clicking my original point. Don't worry, it's gonna come together. <laughs> so we're gonna make this part the pattern that I created. So click the V key to select, and we're gonna select what I just drew. And I'm gonna come over here to the fill and go over to texture fill. Now I'm going to choose the plaid pattern, and there we go. Now the first thing I wanna do is move this in front. So I'm gonna right click the bottom part of the hat, go to arrange, bring to front. And this looks like it's a little bit too big. For my taste, there we go. And we're gonna draw, oh, it's still too big, whatever. We're gonna grab the lips tool, click and drag, hold down shift, and we're gonna draw the ball of the hat. So now we've got a pattern, and also what I forgot to do is if you go back to the fill, you can adjust the scale for the pattern because it's not really coming through. There we go, so we can actually see the checkered. There we go. So now we've used the pattern as a background of our shape. And finally, this is how you would use it with Photoshop. And this is my favorite way and the way I use it the most. Before you use this with Photoshop, you wanna add this swatch to your pattern library. In order to do that, you go up to Edit, Define Pattern, and you're going to give it a name, Buffalo Plaid or Buffalo Check, whatever you wanna call it. Now it's available in your pattern library. 
Let's pretend you wanna add this background to the word joy. One way to do this is to select the layer joy. If you don't see the layers window, come up to window and make sure layers is checked. Right click, blending options, go over here to pattern, and then you would just select the pattern. And then I can adjust the scaling of this. So if I want the squares to be super small, then I would move the slider toward the left. And there we go. Now, one thing I found is that sometimes this doesn't look that great on black shirts. So what I will do is add a white stroke around the letters. Let me make the background black. I'm gonna click on this background layer, make sure I have black selected here for my foreground color and click option delete. Alt delete if you were on Windows. And I'm gonna go back up to the joy text, right click, choose blending options, stroke, and then I can adjust the size of the stroke here. And it just sort of makes that text pop a little bit. And there we go. So that's how you would do it with text. You can also use this pattern with shapes. So if you come over here to the shape tool, come up here and choose a shape, click and draw, and right click, Blending options, pattern overlay. Let's also add a stroke to this. And there we go. Lots of options, you guys. Just let your imagination run wild. I feel like everybody does the same things with the text, with the animals, but you can also do little accents within your design that use this pattern. Now let's talk about trademarks. When it comes to Buffalo check, I wanted to check on this phrase because I've noticed a lot of people on Amazon use Buffalo check to describe these types of designs. And I wanted to make sure there was no trademark on the pattern or the word. The pattern itself, the checkered pattern seems to be fine. However, Buffalo check was a term that was originally coined by a company named Woolrich back in the 1800s. Now it doesn't appear they have a trademark on the term Buffalo check. However, this term is synonymous with their brand. When I went to test to check trademarks for Buffalo check, the only company that had a live trademark for anything related to Buffalo check was the original Buffalo check. And this is an investment company. And if you come down here to the disclaimer, they do not have exclusive rights to use Buffalo check meaning they can only use the original Buffalo check for their trademark. So Buffalo check appears to be okay. I'm not a lawyer. If you wanna be on the safe side, just describe your designs as Buffalo plaid or red and black checkered plaid. Think of terms that people might use to describe it. But from what I've seen and researched, there is no trademark on the checkered plaid itself. Just be careful using Buffalo check. Even though I see people using it, it doesn't mean it's always right. So always err on the side of caution when it comes to this type of stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching.